Anonymous is a loosely associated international network of activists and hackers known for their online operations and digital activism. Since its emergence in the early 2000s, Anonymous has captured the attention of the media and the public, often making headlines with their high-profile cyber attacks and involvement in various social and political causes. Anonymous operates under the philosophy of hacktivism, combining hacking skills with social and political activism. Their actions are often aimed at exposing perceived injustices, promoting freedom of speech, and challenging systems of power. One of their most well-known tactics is distributed denial-of-service attacks, where they overwhelm a target website's servers with traffic, temporarily rendering it inaccessible. While Anonymous is known for their disruptive activities, they also advocate for online privacy and freedom of expression. They have been involved in campaigns against internet censorship, government surveillance, and corporate greed. In the last few days, hacking groups such as Anonymous Sudan have issued a threat to carry out a potentially devastating attack on the European financial system. Their primary target will be the SWIFT International Communications System, and various members have come forward and said that these attacks could have wide-ranging consequences. A video was recently published where the group states that they are retaliating against Europe for its involvement in recent conflicts. According to security experts, although this possibility may seem unlikely, financial institutions should remain vigilant for potential attacks, as some of these groups who are sending these threats have a reputation for launching potent distributed denial-of-service attacks. Anonymous Sudan, a branch of the larger anonymous hacktivist group, issued a video and multiple messages on Telegram, cautioning about an upcoming destructive attack directed towards the European banking system. The post also suggested the possibility of targeting the US Federal Reserve. The person featured in the video adopts the expected anonymous approach, wearing a Guy Fawkes mask and disguising their voice. They suggest that the banking system holds significant influence. The issue with the group is that not everyone has to agree on the motives, as anyone can join Anonymous, and for this reason in recent years it has become known for engaging in this kind of political manoeuvring, which is consistent with their previous actions of issuing threats to other organizations. The video provides an overview of an upcoming attack, highlighting the knowledge and skills of the group in relation to the European banking system. One of the most notable incidents associated with Anonymous was the Operation Payback campaign in 2010. This campaign targeted organizations that were perceived as threats to internet freedom, such as the Motion Picture Association of America and the Recording Industry Association of America. Through distributed denial-of-service attacks and other methods, Anonymous disrupted the online presence of these organizations as a form of protest against their perceived infringement on digital rights. Another significant event was the 2011 collaboration between Anonymous and WikiLeaks. Anonymous launched Operation Avenge Assange in response to the arrest of Julian Assange, the founder of WikiLeaks. They targeted various websites, including those of payment service providers and government agencies, in retaliation for their actions against Assange. This collaboration highlighted the power of decentralized activism and the ability of Anonymous to mobilize its global network of supporters. However, the decentralized nature of Anonymous also means that anyone can claim affiliation and carry out actions in the name of the collective. This has led to controversy and internal debates within the group regarding the legitimacy of certain operations. Some argue that it dilutes the group's message and allows for malicious actors to exploit the Anonymous brand for personal gain or nefarious purposes. In recent years, Anonymous has continued to make headlines with their involvement in various causes, such as the global protest movements like Occupy Wall Street. They have also targeted extremist groups, exposing their online activities and identities. Through their actions, Anonymous has demonstrated the potential of online collective action in effecting change and holding powerful entities accountable. As of right now, the group has made themselves a prominent and influential collective of activists and hackers who have made a significant impact on the digital landscape. They have challenged authority, exposed corruption, and promoted online freedom of expression. While their actions have sometimes been controversial and their methods debated, there is no denying the role they have played in shaping online activism and bringing attention to social and political issues.
Some members of Anonymous have been critical of current events happening in the world right now, leading to certain accounts being banned. The hacking group Anonymous has been a subject of debate and controversy due to their activities and methods. Whether they are perceived as good or bad largely depends on one's perspective and the specific actions being considered. One of the main arguments in favor of Anonymous is their role as digital activists and whistleblowers. They have been involved in exposing corruption, advocating for online privacy and freedom of expression, and challenging oppressive systems. Their actions have shed light on issues that may have otherwise remained hidden, sparking important conversations and promoting transparency. Anonymous has played a significant role in amplifying the voices of marginalized communities and shedding light on social and political injustices. Moreover, Anonymous has used its skills to target and disrupt organizations and individuals that are perceived as oppressive or engaged in unethical practices. They have targeted entities such as oppressive governments, hate groups, and corporations involved in shady activities. In some cases, they have successfully disrupted the operations of these organizations, forcing them to reconsider their actions. Supporters argue that such interventions serve as a form of direct action against those who abuse their power and harm others. Additionally, Anonymous has been credited with promoting online activism and the idea that anyone can make a difference. By operating in a decentralized manner, they have empowered individuals to stand up against injustice and express dissent. They have inspired others to take action and have raised awareness about the importance of digital rights and freedoms. In this regard, Anonymous is seen as a catalyst for change, sparking conversations and mobilizing people to take a stand. On the other hand, critics argue that Anonymous's actions often involve illegal activities and violate the principles of law and order. Their use of hacking techniques, such as distributed denial-of-service attacks, can disrupt legitimate services and cause harm to innocent individuals. This raises concerns about the ethics of their methods and the potential collateral damage they may cause. Furthermore, the lack of accountability opens the door for malicious actors to exploit the anonymous brand for personal gain or to pursue their own agendas. Critics argue that this undermines the credibility and legitimacy of the collective, making it difficult to discern between genuine activism and malicious intent. There are also concerns about the potential for indiscriminate targeting and collateral damage. While Anonymous may have noble intentions, their actions can inadvertently harm innocent individuals or organizations that are unrelated to the issues they are addressing. The lack of centralized control and oversight within the group makes it difficult to ensure that their actions are targeted and proportional. As of right now, the assessment of whether Anonymous is good or bad is subjective and depends on one's perspective. Supporters argue that their actions serve as a means to expose corruption, promote transparency, and advocate for online freedom. They view Anonymous as a force for change and as champions of digital activism. Critics, on the other hand, raise concerns about the legality of their actions, potential collateral damage, and the lack of accountability within the group. It is important to critically examine the motivations, methods, and impact of Anonymous to form an informed opinion about their activities and their role in the digital landscape. Cybersecurity and cybercrime have become significant issues in today's digital age with numerous financial and societal implications. The financial costs associated with cybersecurity measures and the economic impact of cybercrime are substantial. To begin, it is important to understand that the field of cybersecurity encompasses various aspects, including technology, personnel, infrastructure, and policy. Organizations and governments around the world allocate significant resources to protect their digital assets and infrastructure from cyber threats. According to various reports, the global spending on cybersecurity has been steadily increasing in recent years. In 2020, the global expenditure on cybersecurity was estimated to be around $145 billion. This figure includes investments made by both public and private sectors, covering areas such as network security, endpoint protection, data encryption, threat intelligence, and incident response. It is worth noting that this estimate does not capture the full extent of cybersecurity investments, as many organizations also allocate significant internal resources to develop and maintain their cybersecurity capabilities. However, while cybersecurity expenditures are substantial, 
the costs of cybercrime continue to rise and pose a significant financial burden. Cybercrime involves various illicit activities conducted through digital means, such as hacking, data breaches, identity theft, financial fraud, and ransomware attacks. The financial losses resulting from cybercrime are staggering, impacting both businesses and individuals. Estimating the precise costs of cybercrime is challenging due to underreporting, varying methodologies, and the evolving nature of cyber threats. However, Studies and reports provide valuable insights into the magnitude of the problem. According to one estimate, the global cost of cybercrime in 2020 reached $1 trillion. This figure includes direct financial losses, such as stolen funds and monetary damages, as well as indirect costs, such as recovery efforts, reputation damage, and productivity losses. It is important to highlight that the costs associated with cybercrime extend beyond immediate financial losses. Cyber attacks can have long-lasting consequences on businesses and individuals, including legal implications, regulatory penalties, and loss of customer trust. Moreover, cybercrime can disrupt critical infrastructure, impact national security, and undermine economic stability. To counter the growing threat of cybercrime, governments, organizations, and individuals are investing significant resources in cybersecurity measures. The goal is to develop robust defenses, enhance incident response capabilities, and promote cybersecurity awareness and education. Governments around the world are allocating budgets to strengthen their cybersecurity infrastructure and establish frameworks and regulations to combat cyber threats. In addition to government investments, organizations are dedicating substantial resources to safeguard their systems and protect sensitive data. This includes investments in advanced security technologies, employee training programs, security audits, and collaborations with cybersecurity firms. The private sector, including industries such as finance, healthcare, and technology, plays a crucial role in driving cybersecurity innovation and best practices. While the billions of dollars spent on cybersecurity demonstrate the commitment to protect digital assets, it is essential to recognize that cybersecurity is an ongoing battle. Cyber threats continue to evolve and become more sophisticated, necessitating continual investments and advancements in cybersecurity measures. Moreover, the costs of cybercrime are expected to rise as criminals adapt to new technologies and exploit vulnerabilities. Ring of Fire activity sparks earthquake fears. There are some places on our planet that are, unfortunately, more prone to disaster than others. Perhaps the most dangerous of all these places has earned itself the nickname the Ring of Fire, as a result of its renowned reputation. This is a path along the Pacific Ocean that is particularly prone to natural disasters. Along this so-called Ring of Fire is a host of active volcanoes, and the alignment of the tectonic plates means that this ring sees the majority of the earthquakes on Earth too. In 2018, Researchers began to pick up on a number of earthquakes affecting areas nearby to this geological terror zone, namely Japan, Guam, and Taiwan. However, research conducted in California, which has also seen its fair share of natural disasters, suggests that there may be aftershocks that continue to affect the area, due to the tremors seemingly coming in multiples. What is even more concerning is the belief that this smaller seismic activity has the capability to be building to something significantly larger. This Californian study took a sample of 101 major earthquakes recorded in the area surrounding the Pacific Ring of Fire over a 26-year period, from 1990 to 2016. The research was published in the scientific journal Science Advances and provided some insight in the impact of aftershock activity following earthquakes. Earthquakes are most often caused when tectonic plates meet one another. The movement becomes too great, and then the excess energy is released as a shockwave, in turn causing the earthquake. We have long been acting upon the assumption, despite there being statistical inconsistencies when we have looked at relevant seismic data, that an area in that has recently seen a slip in the tectonic plates is more likely to experience a second slip soon after meaning multiple earthquakes are somewhat likely to occur in the same area within a reasonable amount of time to one another. 
the reality seems to be a little more complex. As opposed to the residual stress on the fault line, the fracture along which the initial slip first occurred, the ongoing impact is on the surrounding areas, which with each nearby earthquake are being pushed increasingly closer to failure themselves. This is what results in aftershocks, adjacent ruptures, and the clustered nature in which earthquakes tend to occur. This pattern has been observed in Taiwan, Guam, and Japan. Whilst they are far from one another in relation to static stress interactions, the seismic shaking has had an ongoing impact, eventually reaching each of these impacted areas. Prior to this analysis, a lot of our understanding, even the elements of which were deemed to be correct, were highly speculative. The ongoing research seems to suggest that the most likely predictor for the location of the next earthquake is the surrounding area, because of the initial shock. We are yet to develop a technology that can inform us how big this will be. So while we can be weary, we are yet to know if this may be an indicator of a significant threat or a slight continuation. It's very much ongoing research. The technology that is being developed here has the potential to save lives, giving much greater evacuation time in the event of disasters. Man discovers mysterious large face on Canada cliffside. Sometimes the answers to mysteries seem to be right in front of us. For over two years, Hank Gus, of an Aboriginal group called the Sheshat First Nation, had been searching for a face that he heard existed on a cliffside on Reeks Island. When he finally discovered that he and Parks Canada First Nations program manager Matthew Payne shared the news with an archaeologist they work with in the area. Describing the face, Payne stated, We went out to see it recently, and it's remarkable. It really is a face staring back at you. The Seshat have lived in the area for thousands of years, and one goal is to find out if the face goes along with any oral histories the Sheshat have. Another question archaeologists would like to answer is if the face is man-made or a natural creation. A barrier to discovering more about the face, which is believed to be about seven feet tall, is that the cliff where it resides is very dangerous. The island has a rocky shoreline with lots of hidden rocks, and it can be dangerous depending on sea conditions, commented Payne. You need to know what you're doing to go and look at it. Despite these barriers, the Seshat First Nation and Parks Canada are eager to look at the face close up. Whether or not the face is man-made or created by Mother Nature, it's reported to be quite striking. The fact that it has been witnessed by so few to date is rather incredible and shows how new discoveries can pop up just about anywhere. Huge Chimpanzee Population Thriving in Remote Congo Forest the Congo forest is known as one of the most treacherous places on Earth. Despite the dangers lurking in this colossal forest, the local chimpanzee populace is seemingly flourishing with life. The Congo forests border the Central African Republic. Legends of old claimed the existence of colossal apes that howled at the full moon and devoured lions and predators, but these were believed to be merely myths. After a team of researchers wandered through the forest's unlisted lands, they discovered what is thought to be a chimp megaculture, possibly the last of its kind, with a huge population of chimps. German primatologist Cleve Hicks states, This is one of the few places left on Earth with a huge continuous population of chimps. We estimate many thousands of individuals, perhaps tens of thousands. This would make the chimp populace the largest in Africa. Because the land was uncharted, we have insight into how chimps and apes act in completely natural environments removed from any prior human interruption. The chimps in the Biliuli forest are larger than most other chimps, meaning the legends have seeds of truth in them. And they have, in fact, been spotted devouring leopards. In the colonies of the forest, male chimps patrol the area while mothers teach their young to utilize tools and eat insects, and there is a definite order and way of living for these chimpanzees. The cameras the researchers placed around the forest showed that aside from the chimps, there are olive baboons, hyenas and forest elephants all residing in the area, and so much more wildlife. According to Hicks, we saw incredible amounts of wildlife on our camera traps, but we did not catch a single film of a human. 
it remains one of the last untouched wildernesses in Africa. The Billy chimpanzees were first found in 2008, but the research did not occur until recently with the published study in the Journal of Biological Conservation. As it stands, in Africa, humans alone have destroyed chimpanzee habitats so badly that in just the past century, their population has gone from millions to several hundred thousand, which emphasizes the importance of this discovery. However, researcher John Hart claims the area is at great risk of being opened up and explains that the Lord's Resistance Army are trying to move through the part of the forest and brigands from the area are trying to create conflict bases in the Congo forest that will endanger the animals. Scientists and researchers worry about hunters seeking to invade this previous unfounded section of the Biliuli to hunt the chimps and elephants to trade in the Congo Basin. Around 440 chimps are eradicated annually for trade. Hart says, with the availability of bushmeat declining elsewhere, commercial bushmeat hunters are going further and further into the forest. DRC law protects chimpanzees due to their endangered status. However, the law is only applicable if hunters get caught. Officials can be bribed, and according to Hicks, that is often the case, since the local militia benefit at times from these huntings. Hicks believes the military is even giving weapons to the poachers. The chimp megaculture is helpless to poachers should they decide to invade the area and hunt the animals with no proper or solid protection. Elephants, especially, have already been severe victims of poaching and they, along with chimps, cannot stand to suffer an even larger population loss. Hart desires for there to be a unit of wildlife guards who circle the forest and protect the animals inside in order to stop the hunters. According to Hart, it is a very significant opportunity to preserve a whole ecosystem of chimpanzees. Elsewhere on this continent, this opportunity just does not exist. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.